In this tutorial, you'll learn how to install and configure the PassBolt password manager on Alma Linux. By the way, this same process works for CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and Rocky Linux as well. PassBolt is an open source password manager designed for team collaboration. You can use PassBolt to securely generate, store, manage, and monitor your team credentials. By the end of the video, you'll have a free, secure, self-hosted password manager that you can use for yourself or with your team. The recommended minimum server requirements are 2 GB of RAM and 2 CPU cores. Also, if you would like PassBolt to send email notifications, then you'll need an SMTP server. And finally, you'll need to have NTP configured to avoid any issues with GNUPG authentication. Here I'm logged into an Alma Linux server. The first thing we want to do is make sure that the system is up to date and we can do that with DNF upgrade. We're going to use wget to download an installation script. So let's check to see if it's installed on our system. Sometimes it's not. So in my case, it's not. So I'm going to install it with sudo dnf install dash y wget. Now let's check it again. And that's what it looks like when it's successfully installed on our system. Now let's use the wget command to download the script that will add the passbolt package repository. Now let's download the text file that contains the SHA-512 sum for the passbolt repo setup script. Next, let's ensure that the script is valid and has the proper checksum. If the SHA sum or checksum is correct, what will happen is that the sudo bash command will get executed and the passbolt repo setup.ce.sh script will be executed. If for some reason the checksum fails, then the script will be removed from the system and you'll have to download it again. Okay, this command will take a minute or two to run. Now the PassBolt repository is set up so we can go ahead and install PassBolt. I'm going to use the dash Y option to automatically answer yes to any question that DNF might ask me. So here the PassBolt Community Edition server is being installed and all of its dependencies. PassBolt comes with a configuration helper tool which allows you to quickly set up MariaDB, Nginx, and an SSL certificate for your server. So let's run that tool now. Here you're asked if you want to install a local MariaDB server, and we do, so we're going to type 1 and hit enter for yes. Now we're getting asked for a password for the database root user, and for this simple demonstration, I'm just going to use the unsecure password of password, P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D, and I'm going to hit enter. Again, I'll verify that. Of course, in production, you would use long and secure passwords, but for this demonstration and to keep things simple, I'm just using simple passwords. Now we'll need a PassBolt database username, and I'm going to use PassBolt user. And for this, I'll use PassBolt Pass. Again, verifying it. And finally, we need a name for the PassBolt database, and I'm going to use PassBolt DB. If you're running on a virtual environment, such as a virtual machine or an instance in the cloud, you'll most likely see this message. It's asking if we want to install HaveageD. HaveageD allows GNU-PG to generate a key faster. By the way, Havage stands for Hardware Volatile Entropy Gathering and Expansion, and of course, HaveageD is the Hardware Volatile Entropy Gathering and Expansion daemon. Again, if you're in a virtualized environment, you'll see this prompt, so type one and hit enter. Now you'll be asked to enter a host name. Here, enter your fully qualified domain name if you have one. The name you provide here will be used as the server name for Nginx and as the domain name used to register a free SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt. I'll be using passbolt-demo.linuxtrainingacademy.com since that's under my control, but of course remember to use your server name or your IP address. Here we'll let Passbolt do the configuration for SSL, so we'll choose the auto option, which is 2, and hit enter. Go ahead and enter in your email address. So at this point you have Passbolt Community Edition Server installed on your system. And to complete the installation, we need to start up a web browser and enter in the domain name or IP address of your system. Here I'm using Firefox on Alma Linux, but of course you could use Chrome on Windows or even Firefox on Mac OS, for example. 
you'll be greeted with a Getting Started page, so go ahead and click on the Get Started button. Here, Passbolt is checking your environment and everything is set up correctly, so we can go ahead and click on Start Configuration. We installed MariaDB on the same server, so we'll use localhost as the hostname or IP address. The username was Passbolt User, and the password is Passbolt Pass. The database name is Passbolt DB. Now we'll click on Next to continue. For the server name, I'm just going to use Passbolt Demo, but of course you can use anything you would like. For the server email, use your email address. Now click on Next. Now we need to provide the SMTP server configuration. If you need an SMTP service, consider using something like SendGrid, ReachMail's Easy SMTP, Amazon's SES product, or even your current email provider such as Gmail or Yahoo. Again, be sure to fill out your information and the information for your SMTP server or your SMTP service. Once you're complete with the SMTP settings, click on Next. The first Passbolt account you create is going to be the admin user for Passbolt. So go ahead and fill out your information here. Once you've finished, click on Next. Once the installation is completed, you'll be redirected to a final page where you can download the extension for your web browser. Do that by clicking on Download Extension. So here I'm running Firefox, so I'll add that to my Firefox browser. I'll click OK to close this pop-up. And now that you have the extension installed, you'll be redirected to this page where you need to select a passphrase. This password is very important and should be very secure. This is the only passphrase you'll need to remember going forward if you store all your passwords in Passbolt. You can think of this as the gatekeeper password to all of your other passwords. Now, choose wisely as it says here on the screen. I'm going to use the passphrase of Passbolt is great, isn't it? 42. And that passphrase includes a capital letter, some punctuation, and some numbers. So it fulfills our requirements here. But of course, you choose any passphrase that you want that fulfills those requirements. Once you have your passphrase, go ahead and click on Next. After you click on Next, the Passbolt Recovery Kit will be downloaded to your computer. Make sure that you save this recovery kit in a safe place. This recovery kit contains your key, and the key is the only way to access your account and passwords. And if you lose this key, for example, by breaking or losing your computer, and not having a backup, your encrypted data will be lost even if you remember your passphrase. Now that we have our recovery kit downloaded, we can click on Next. Now you'll be asked to create a security token by picking a color and three characters. This token is a secondary security mechanism that helps you to mitigate against phishing attacks. Each time you're performing a sensitive operation on Passbolt, you'll see this token. So if you see something different, you know it's not your Passbolt instance. For this demonstration, I'm going to use LTA, which of course stands for Linux Training Academy, and I'm going to pick the color orange, which I just happen to like. Once you've made your selections, click Next. At this point, you've successfully installed Passbolt on your server, created an administrator account, and you are now ready to begin storing and sharing passwords securely using your own instance of Passbolt.